Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder, developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 87, we'll continue our journey of becoming a software architect by taking a look at the next step in the roadmap I introduced in lesson 86. As a matter of fact, in lesson 86, I kind of outlined this roadmap. So if you're just coming into this lesson and you haven't seen 86, please please pause this and take a look at the prior lesson first because I kind of described this roadmap and also went through making sure you're prepared. And we went to that in detail. In this lesson number 87, we're gonna be focusing on developing a personal roadmap and radar. Uh, kind of the next step after you've gone through the checklist of saying, yes, I am actually prepared. I want to become a software architect. In less than 58, I kind of introduced uh, the notion of architecture certification, and I talked about the Open Group's architecture certification. This wasn't TOGAF, um, but rather architecture certific certification. And if you haven't seen that lesson, again, this would be a good time to pause this lesson and actually see that video. It's a short five to 10 minute video, uh, just introducing the idea of, and the process of certification. Now. I'm not at this point necessarily recommending that you do go for this certification. However, I am strongly recommending that you download the nomination packet and the links are all within the end of this video as well as lesson 58. But the idea is that filling out this nomination packet allows you to start tracking your proficiencies as an architect. And this is a snapshot of what one of these core competencies look like. For example, establish a technical vision. Um, it allows you to track the dates and what project or major activity or system you worked on that, and then briefly describe um, how you establish that technical vision. And so this is a way of actually kind of charting your course. As a matter of fact, uh, that's what I want to do in this video, is I want to kind of show you how to develop a radar uh, to be able to leverage this nomination packet for certification uh, to really kind of chart your career path as an architect. There's a lot of different sections within that nomination packet, but specifically there's three. Um, uh, core foundational skills and then experience skills and finally professional development or personal development. Uh, those core foundational skills, and there's 17 of them there, and these are all skills an architect needs. Some of these you'll uh, be familiar with from lesson 86 when I actually talked about the core expectations of an architect. But the first one, applying communication skills, and there's various levels of proficiency within these. Uh, leading individuals and also leading teams, uh, kind of one of those things an architect does need to do. Uh, perform conflict resolution. I talked about this in the last lesson about negotiation and facilitation. Um, this is an ability to say, hmm, I've never, I've never really done any conflict resolution. And so this is an opportunity to be able to chart that and track that um, within a radar, which I'm going to show you after this, uh, this section right here. And then the other one, managing architectural elements of an IT project plan. In other words, uh, within an overall plan, uh, what aspects of architecture and need to be coordinated within that plan. And it's helping manage those. It's also understanding the business aspects. This is what I was referring to in the last section or the last lesson on really understanding those business core business drivers and talking with business stakeholders to really understand uh, what is the business drivers and goals within this particular project. Uh, it's developing an IT architecture, and this is those architectural elements, uh, such as, uh, for example, components, or what architecture style we'll be using, which we'll see in, in a future lesson uh, within this roadmap. It's also using modeling techniques, as well as performing technical solution assessments, um, especially with CFSO 8. Uh, this is really analyzing an architecture, assessing an architecture, which is absolutely vital and uh, one of those kind of core competencies to develop. It's also applying IT standards to various projects where applicable, and that's kind of the important piece and where those standards were applied. Um, it's also CF10, CFS10, which is establishing the technical vision. Um, this is really um, what I was referring to in a prior video about the balance between being pragmatic yet visionary. 
It's also the use of techniques as well as applying methods of architecture. And this goes through all sorts of modeling techniques such as uh, data analysis or uh, component analysis or even the use of ATAM or CBAM. Uh, it's defining solutions to requirements and also managing stakeholder requirements. And this is all about that collaboration to really understand how those requirements are being satisfied through the architecture. Probably number 15 is one of the ones that's probably one of the more difficult ones in here, and that's establishing architectural decisions. And I did do a prior video where I did talk about architecture decisions, and so I would encourage you to look up that one as well, where I discussed the use of architecture decision records as a way of documenting those architecture decisions, a fantastic way of gaining proficiency of CFS 15. Also validated in conformance of solutions to the architecture. This is what I was referring to in Lesson 86, the prior lesson, when I was talking about ensuring compliance with the architecture as a core expectation. And the last one within this section is performance as a technology advisor. And these are all the core foundational skills. Then there's experience skills. Uh, ECL1, which is experience producing architectures and demonstrating that proficiency. Also, the breadth of architectural experience, but also experience with different technologies and architectures. Um, now, on EC02, the breadth I'm going to be talking about actually in the next lesson, number 88, um, but also I referred in lesson 86 um, to that experience with different technologies and architectures as a kind of a core expectation of an architect. That was the fifth one, as a matter of fact. Um, and so this is a way of actually charting and documenting what experience you have had. Um, and then there's industry knowledge and also knowledge of IT, IT trends. Now you'll notice it went from EC03 to seven. Uh, four, five, and six are not requirements of the first level of software architect, which is why those are not included in here. But it's also uh, knowledge of the industry and also knowledge of trends and then uh, demonstrating uh, where you've leveraged that knowledge. Uh, the last couple have to do with professional development, and it's developing and maintaining IT industry knowledge and also vertical knowledge, um, something that we'll be looking at again in the next lesson. Now, the idea here is to take all these categories where you can actually now start to document these and develop um, your own personal radar. Now, this is an example of one I have. You can use Keynote. Um, PowerPoint, uh, whatever kind of tool, Visio. Um, but I like to divide that into the three sections, the core foundational skills, core experience skills, and the professional development ones. And I, now the certification packet has four different levels of proficiency. You can actually create four concentric circles. Um, I really here am just showing three, none. Like I have no, <laughs> I have no proficiency in that. I've never done that. I've applied it and I am proficient in it. And so however, but the point is you take all of your core foundation skills, so 17 of those ones, uh, take the five core experience skills and the professional development skills and then chart those on your radar in terms of which ones you have no experience with, areas where you've been able to document that you've applied it, and then proficiency. Um, doing this radar allows you to kind of step back and say, I have an opportunity, for example, uh, to really work on CFS 13, for example, that kind of core foundational skill. And by working on that, then be able to document that in that nomination packet and move that to the radar to now the fact that it's applied. Um, this allows you to really see what areas, because what you really want as a software architect is to take all of these core experience skills, professional development, and foundational skills and bring all of these into proficient. And that's really the main goal here. All right, well, that tackles uh, the details of developing a personal roadmap and a radar in the next lesson next week. And don't forget, these are every week now for this particular series. Uh, we'll talk about starting to focus on the technical breadth and how to maintain that technical, technical breadth. And in here, I'll also talk about that industry knowledge as well. So I wanted to show you a couple of resources that will help you in this journey. Um, first, um, an, an initial announcement um, that uh, Neil Ford and myself are creating a free um, webinar for 30 minutes uh, every, every month. Uh, we'll, of course, have it on a Friday uh, called Foundations Friday Forum. 
And in here, it's a place you can actually register. Our next forum is actually on May 29th of 2020, but you can stay tuned on this page um, or our page from the fundamentals of software architecture.com uh, to be able to register. This is a free 30 minute kind of topic based a Q&A forum where Neil and I will be talking about some aspect of software architecture and allows you to kind of chime in with some questions or if even if you don't have any questions just kind of to listen to the Q&A. Um, I have found it's interesting in my career I used to hate Q&A sessions and I've learned to really appreciate them because there's certain questions that drive different tangents uh, that things come out that you otherwise wouldn't uh, think about saying. And so, anyways, I've provided the QRs for those. Um, also, our book, Fundamentals of Software Architecture, where all of this roadmap stuff is actually described. Uh, so I've provided the link there. Um, back a couple of years ago, I did a interview um, at one of the software architecture conferences by O'Reilly. And on just a short 10 minute video on transitioning into becoming a software architect. Um, provides a lot of these kind of tips, but uh, kind of a good video to watch if you haven't already seen that. Um, also, uh, Software Architecture Monday, this is lesson number 87, which means there's 86 prior lessons out there. Another place to kind of keep posted uh, now and in the future. Um, also, I do public and private training, especially in these days uh, right now in 2012 or 2012, 2020, um, where we do have uh, various lockdowns and such. I've been doing a lot of virtual training, and so you can keep tabs on where I'm at on those uh, either full day, three hour, or one hour virtual trainings through my upcoming events page or the training page there. And uh, finally, um, please leverage developer2architect.com. I created this website as a give back um, to be able to post a lot of articles, books, and videos uh, that I find um, both that I've written but that other people have written on some aspect of software architecture just to kind of say what book should I start reading and so uh, please leverage this. Um, fantastic! So this has been Lesson 87 of uh, Part 2 of Becoming a Software Architect. Stay tuned next Monday, um, not in two weeks but in one week, uh, for uh, Lesson 88 where we'll talk about some of the other aspects of this roadmap, uh, specifically about gaining that technical breadth from an industry as well as technology perspective and how to kind of maintain that technical breadth going forward. So uh, thank you all so much for listening. Stay safe, everyone, and I hope you enjoy Software Architecture Monday. Thank you all so much.